Hello, my name is Lisa Rose. I'm the Festival Director for Queer Screen. I would like to uh, first acknowledge the traditional custodians in the land of where I am, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, and pay my respects to the elders past, present and emerging. Sovereignty was never ceded in Australia. This was and always will be Aboriginal land. Welcome to this interview and Q&A for the fantastic film, My Fiona. We have three wonderful um, filmmakers part of the program here uh, to join us. So I'm going to welcome them in and they can introduce themselves. Hi. I'm, hi, I'm Kelly Walker. I'm the writer and director of My Fiona. Hi, I'm Corbin Reed and I play Gemma in My Fiona. Hi, my name is Laura Jansen, and I'm the director of photography of My Fiona. Thank you all so much for joining me. Uh, I'm really excited to talk about this film. It's um, it, it's a really fantastic thing when you're a programmer and you get to discover new talent and you get to uh, see um, lesbian films that uh, I'm assuming made on not a huge budget, but done with such heart and done in such a wonderful way. So um, first off, Kelly, I just want to ask about uh, how the film came about. What is the, because it is, it obviously deals with very serious subject matter. Um, and I just wanted to see how, what the genesis of the general story was. Yeah, I mean, um, I clearly wasn't, <laughs> I clearly had to attack more than one big issue in this film. I couldn't just do, couldn't just choose one. Uh, basically, when I was about 11 years old, my babysitter uh, died from suicide. And that really, at such a young age, it definitely like kind of made me realize the world is not safe. The world is not promised. And um, it definitely was like this traumatic thing that I don't think I ever knew how to reconcile with. So I think a lot of Fiona's story is birthed from Susanna, my babysitter. And then as far as the relationship between Jane and Gemma, um, I'm bisexual, but it was for a very long time. I didn't know how to label it because I've, I've been married to a man for the last seven years or five years together, seven. I'd been in relationships with women, but I felt like I was undeserving to call myself bisexual. And, and it was almost through writing Jane and I like, almost like standing behind her and allowing her to figure out herself, I then kind of popped out and was like, I'm too, um, in a really strange way. So that's kind of that. Yeah, right. No, because it is like it does. It does obviously. Um, it, it obviously does tackle those those two things about someone re recognizing their sexuality, um, and also obviously dealing with um, the suicide. Like so, during the process of when you were writing, was it always like that opening scene is um, so shocking? Like if you, particularly like when I watched the film, I I had no idea what the film was about, and so that opening scene, it's just it's a really um, shocking thing for people to see. Yeah. Um, so was that always, when you were writing the script, was it always going to open that way? No. Um, that was a much later draft, actually. Uh, you know what it was? It was it was the idea of, like, how can you convey to an audience how terrifyingly, like, unknown this, where your life just changes immediately. And, like, the only way to do that was to put everyone in the perspective of these two women in an office, Jane specifically, and see that moment that her life will never be the same. And just like almost in honoring everyone that's lost someone to, to suicide in that sense. Um, yeah, and I think it is very much that thing where I, I think you'd be hard pressed to find anyone, unfortunately, in the world who hasn't been touched by suicide in their lives. And so it can be, uh, you know, watching a film like this, it can be quite triggering for people, but I actually found that the process for me, of someone who's lost people, people close to the suicide, like quite cathartic. Um, and uh, because it really does deal with the, the process of, of dealing with of the grief and the unknown. Um, but also you've really managed to, uh, there's a lot of humor and sort of joy in the film as well. So it's a really um, nice balance. So was that always part of making sure that you wanted to have, um, you know, elements of joy and, and humor within the film? 100%. Um, when I was 17, I had a, a, a boyfriend actually pass away. And when I got the phone call, I just gotten a Lucky magazine, like a, a glossy magazine and a frozen yogurt. And I got the phone call and I hung up and I was like, well, I have this frozen yogurt and it's melting. And I really wanted to read this magazine. So I, I'm just going to do that now. And I look back and just realize, like, even in your worst moments, 
there's always humor. There's always levity. There's always joy. Um, even this week, um, for those that don't know, Jeanette Moss, who plays Jane in, in My Fiona, actually just passed away. And even this week, which has been such a nightmare, I have been laughing. I have actually wet my pants laughing so hard at something that was just so silly. And it's just, you can't fight that the universe kind of throws both in at the exact same time. And that's what light and dark is contrast. That's all it really is. Yeah. Yeah. And that is, it's, it's, it's incredibly sad that, um, that she passed away. Her performance is incredible in this film. She, um, she really is fantastic. Um, Corbin, I just wanted to talk to you about um, how you got involved with the project and how um, you connected to your character. Yeah, um, so I got involved because Kelly and I have a mutual friend and she was looking for somebody to fill this role and he was like, I think she'd be perfect. And I met Kelly and um, I was just like, this is somebody I wanna work with. Like we got coffee and I read the script obviously and I'm a writer myself and a filmmaker myself. So I really, uh, indie filmmaking to me is, I get how hard it is, but I also know like if you have a good script and you have somebody who has like, like Kelly, who has a good head on their shoulders and has a really good grip on their characters and um, the complexity of their characters and has good energy, you know, they're gonna be a good leader. Um, no matter how you know small the budget is or how hard it is, it's it's going to turn out well, and I think it obviously did. <laughs> um, I have to say, like it was one of the harder roles I've played, just because there's so much grief, um, and there is there's grief, but there's also joy, but there is a lot of grief, and um, you know. I'm not like a method actor or anything, but I definitely wanted to be true to who this character was. And so it was just going in and out of that for, you know, what was that like four weeks? How long did we? Yeah. Yeah. It was a lot. It was a lot emotionally. Like it was a, it was a lot. It was a lot of weight to carry, you know, to relive, to relive that moment of, to really live in her skin and relive that moment over and over again and try to work through it over and over again emotionally. It was like, it took a toll, but it was very rewarding. And, you know, I'm super grateful that um, I, I got to be a part of Kelly's work in that way, but also just like be a part of Jeanette's life in that way. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, you and Jeanette had fantastic chemistry. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and it was a really interesting thing to explore, you know, the fact that, you're connecting with someone who you may not necessarily have connected with, but your connection is the person you've lost. Like it's something that has been um, explored sometimes in in um, in other things, but it, I think it is something that people kind of, it is definitely a thing of grief where you kind of grapple at and you kind of, you grab at any sort of connection that you have to that. Absolutely. That person that you lost, but there really did seem to be quite the connection between the two of you. So well done. You performed yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Laura, can you talk a little bit about what life was like on set? Obviously, being you know quite a heavy subject matter, but obviously, as we discussed, having some light moments like um, how that experience was um, for you. And there's some really lovely setups and, and shot, particularly there's that one scene with the blue background that um, is really beautifully lit and shot. Yeah, um, well, like Corbin said, it, it was um, a three week shoot, 15 days. So, you know, we hustled every single day. It was it was fast. It was, you know, we had to cut shots here and there, which is kind of what always seems to happen. Uh, we combined shots. Um, it was great that we had a steady cam operator on um, for some of the days. So that was kind of a really easy way to uh, combine those shots. And I think it fits the story too. a lot of the steady cam work that that we did because doing like one fluid shot really kind of puts you in the character's shoes. It's kind of like you're there. Um, and I think it really like pinpoints what we want the audience to like be looking at, you know, and focusing on in a certain moment. Um, so I thought that was like um, just really great to have um, in our, in our arsenal. Um, but yeah, it was like, there were days that were definitely like kind of stressful. Um, I think Kelly said to me like, 
she said this like well after we wrapped, but I think she said like on the first week or after like day three, she said that like she was gonna die or something. <laughs> I literally thought. I did. I told my husband, I said, I think I'm gonna die today. <laughs> it was so intense. And we had a heat wave that first week. Oh yeah, it was warm. It was yeah. really warm. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, in terms of like the cinematography, you know, we, we tried to honestly, like, just keep it like natural and like kind of simple, you know, um, uh, because of the schedule. But, you know, I tried to play a lot with like color temperature, um, uh, to reference, um, kind of what the characters were like feeling because there are, like they said, um, happy and sad moments. It's really a roller coaster. So, um, we use like a lot of, um, soft lighting as well. Um, cause there's a lot of intimate moments. Um, but yeah, kind of picking and choosing whether it's kind of a warm color temperature, or like a cooler, there's a lot of like bluer scenes. One of my favorite scenes um, is an exterior. Um, and even though we were using all natural light, um, it has a complete like bluish tone to it, the, the, just the whole scene. Um, so, and, and I love doing stuff like that. Yeah, and also the, I can't think of what to call them. The lanterns? Is that what the yeah, lanterns? Mm. Yeah, that was <laughs> yeah, that's such a nice uh, bookend to have the, the lanterns. I really, um, and it's such a beautiful final shot in the film. I'm not going to say what it is. Spoiler alert. Um, but <laughs> but actually, it's such a beautiful went to shot. The actual festival after we shot the film in like honor of the movie. And I said, if we can get that scene shot and we can get it done right, I'm going to go to the festival. And it was. If anyone ever has a chance to go to a lantern festival, do it because it's the most incredible, magical experience you'll ever have. Yeah, yeah, it's it looked it looks beautiful. I you I'm sold. I want to go to that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so isn't the the classic line "Don't work with animals and children"? Like, as well, <laughs> you, was there an animal? I don't think it was an animal, but there was a child, and they they are fabulous. Um, how did you find them? He was casting. Um, Natalie, our casting director, found him, and I'd seen his tape. His tape was perfect. He so Bailey was written based on this kid I used to babysit, Alec, and I and of course then I had to call another character Alec because I love this little boy so much. And um, so I was looking for a child that reminded me of him. And Alec has a very old soul quality. I used to talk to him when he was like four years old about stuff in my life, and he'd say. Kelly, maybe you should talk to your friends about this stuff. I don't think this is for me. <laughs> so it was looking for that that kind of child that is otherworldly, but also grounded in his experience. And Alahim came into that audition, and I was so nervous. It was like meeting like my future lover, and he was just perfect. And I I swear to God, and I told him this, and again, I probably shouldn't be telling children this, but I was like, I think you're one of my soulmates. And it was a little uncomfortable, and I'm glad it's nice to let him shoot with us. Um, but he was just fantastic. I mean, I think we all got so much joy from him on set and and just kind of the lens of a child experiencing. It was his first big role. And, um, yeah, he. I mean, he was lovely to direct. It's one of those things with kids. You can't. You can't tell them like, there's a there's a thing we say in acting. It's like throw it away. The dialogue just throw the moment away. And I told that to him once and he was holding a deck of cards in the scene. So the next scene, next take, he literally threw the cards away. And it's just that it's like you have to be creative when it comes to directing. But I'd be curious with these two, like what it was like from their side, working with him and also shooting him. Yes. Good question, Corbin. Yeah. I, you know, I don't know what it is, but I keep getting the honor of working with children i don't know what it is but <laughs> i want to show a show that i just wrapped in the winter they put me with a really lovely young lady and she's it's her first big role and like they gave her a lot a lot to do um in the show before that i had a, a young kid that i worked with as well and, the, and then obviously this film this a couple summers ago so i've gotten very good at working with kids um it is frustrating it can be very frustrating but elohim i remember it's just, what's his name right hello I call him. Hello, hello hello he was really special and he, and i do find that kids in general um like being around like in this industry i've found they love being around older like actors, like it's just like they feel like they're like part of the, they feel like they're grown when they're really not, obviously. Um, but you have to be super, super patient. And I mean, for the fact, again, we were shooting an indie film in three weeks and 
you don't have time to do a million takes to get your stuff right. And he really like, I was very impressed. I was very impressed with the time restraints and the restrictions, how well he performed. And, um, you know, kids also keep it playful and can keep it light and can keep it fun, you know, in stressful situations, but you do have to sort of adopt a certain level of patience that you wouldn't otherwise have to have. Yeah. Did you have anything to add to that, Laura? Um, yeah, I mean, shoot, you know, shooting with kids, you always just have to like um, keep on your toes. I mean, we shot um, when we were when we weren't doing steady cam, we shot a lot of handheld. Um, so it was kind of easy for me to just kind of like, you know, follow him because, you know, they're not always they're not going to hit their marks all the time and, you know, that kind of stuff. So and, and my focus puller was was on point um, as well. Um, but in terms of like communicating with him, I kind of uh, I kind of had the easy way out. And I would just have Kelly or our first AD Avery kind of give him direction. But that's kind of how I work too with actors. I, I just, I don't want too many people like, you know, talking to them. I, I just kind of let the director of the AD do it. So I kind of, I had it easy on, on that side. <laughs> um, so Kelly, how long were you working on the, like how long pre-production? Like how long was the, when you first came up with the idea to shooting to like, yeah, was uh, it was two years of writing it actually. Okay. Um, it was two years of writing it. And I think the reason it took so long was I don't think I knew what I was trying to say in the beginning. And I got into Australians in LA have a writer's lab and I got in with the script and we had to read like our one page, like what's your film about? And it's a one page of it. And our mentor looked at me and said, after I was done, he goes, so what's your film about? And I went to read it again. And he's like, no, 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 no. You don't know what your film's about. And that was a huge turning point what the story was and I realized I wasn't being brave enough to tell the story I wanted to tell I was kind of you know playing around it so once that script I kind of went back to blank page again that script got done it was maybe eight months until Matt Minchell our first producer came involved on the, on the scene and then from there it was a couple months of raising money and by I'd say he came on in August 2018 we were shooting by June 2019 and yeah okay. And then you were meant to have your world premiere at BFI Flair. Mm -hmm. All of us were flying out. We were figuring out our outfits. But, yeah, it's such a wonderful festival, Flair. Not that I've been, but I know that it is from a program perspective. Um, and, yeah, and they obviously had to, I think they cancelled, was it about five days before yeah. they were making the yeah. It's such, such a bummer. bummer. They cancelled the, we the day before we were supposed to fly out. And I was still maybe going to go, even with the pandemic. My brother was like, all right, we're going. Who cares? We get stuck in London. We get stuck in London. And I'm like, all right, let's uh, let's get stuck in London together. What do we have to do? <laughs> and they'd probably be stuck there if you didn't go. <laughs> I'm in London. Um, so it's it's good that it all turned out the way it did. I mean, it, it sucked. And I think it was, you know, it was also like very much similar to the movie in the sense of, I think, and collectively everyone could experience that idea of, you have very simple expectations. The pandemic wiped you of them, and now you're having to kind of regroup and figure out what your next steps are based without anything you had planned. Yeah, we um, so we have a second festival in September, and um, there was another film, um, Cicada, that was meant to world premiere at Flair as well that we ended up, and they took about, I think that yeah, they took about five months to be like they're just going to wait it out, and then they decided we, we just can't wait anymore. Um, so how is that like? How have you found this experience of, you know, obviously we're in this very strange situation. Like it's like it's it's terrible for um, for filmmakers when you you know it's like you said it's, it's taken you years to make this film and to you know to have. Um, have uh, you know cinemas shutter and all of those sort of things um, happen? How have you found that general? Like, has it been quite hard, like emotionally, to to deal with that? Like, in um, I'm not and, I'm not gonna like sugarcoat it. And usually, I like to like spin everything with a positivity. I don't know if I'll do that. Um, you know, it was just uh, it was devastating. It was scary. It was fearful. Um, it wasn't like there was anyone I could call and be like, hey, so when your film hit a pandemic, what did you do? How did, there was just nobody. Yeah. Um, and I, I got really, I got really bitter. I got really like poor, poor us, poor us in this film. And, and then after a while, okay, I do have a positive spin. Then after a while, I realized we had a lot of, just a lot of roadblocks going up to, into shooting. 
so many things that should have probably prohibited us from making this movie at all. But every time something went awry, something always better happened. And I kind of started to go, well, why would this be any different? Why would this be the one time that everything went to shit and just went to shit? So I kind of just let go of that idea that I have to fix this and just kind of went, when the time's right, the time will be exactly what it's supposed to be. And when you emailed me, Lisa, I got your email and I was like, this is it. This is that moment. And it was the most pure, didn't have to think about why, when we should premiere all these things. It was, it was just, and here we are today. Well, I'm totally honored to have the film. It is, uh, I have a bunch of people that uh, watch films for me and every single one who watched it um, loved it. And uh, you were all like, this is an excellent um, independent lesbian film that touches on like really important things that people need to be um, talking about um, and thinking about. So what is it, um, the final question I'm gonna ask is, what is it that you would like people um, to take from the film? Um, I think for me, it's probably the idea of the gray shades of grief, the gray shades of sexuality, the okay living in messiness and not having to have anything figured out until you do. Um, just that kind of, again, that's just like that in between. And also, you know, there's an element about suicide, depression, antidepressants, and I kind of asked a lot of questions in the film in hopes that people, if they're curious, they'll go and, and search those answers because I didn't think it was our place to answer that. So my hope is that it just, it starts conversations about, um, about taking away shame from needing help with prescription medicine and also about honoring those conversations that need to be happen, happening with your doctor and your, you know, your medical team and, um, and yeah, and just, grief sucks and it's terrible and there's no end and it just is exactly what it's going to be at any given time. And that's, it's really okay. Yeah, it is. That is a, that is a lovely way to, to think about it is it just comes in waves and, um, but you know, we all have to experience it and, and it can be a cathartic experience to, um, to watch something and see different perspectives of it to, to yeah. learn things. And um, I'll tell you like already just even this week with Jeanette, the amount of times I felt like solace and being like the, the film almost is a reflection of I'm going to be okay. I'm not okay today, but it, you know, I, I can hold truth to it's, it's strange that she would be playing the role that we're all feeling now. It's yeah. Really um, yeah. 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 Well, I thank you all for, um, for, for joining me, uh, particularly in a time when you're, not having the best time. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to throw to the trailer for those people who haven't um, seen the film. They can uh, now watch the trailer. And um, if this hasn't inspired them to, I'm sure the trailer will. Do you ever th think about her when we're together? Like think, think about her? I think about her all the time. Like that when we're together now. Sometimes when I feel happy, I feel terrible. Like we're betraying her. Should we stop? I literally have no idea what I'm doing. Just be his J. Are you picking me up every day? For now, yeah. Like or don't like. Like. Gemma's a part of Fee for you. You're kidding yourself if you think you're all of a sudden gay. Give me a break. And you're a part of Fee for Gemma. I'm literally just doing what Fee would have done. Exactly. That's why it's so weird, okay? You have no idea what we're going through. No idea. We all lost her. You're the only one acting like it was personal. She was my wife, Jane! My wife! Excellent. There you go. That was the beautiful trailer for the wonderful My Fiona. So that is playing on, when is it, 7 p.m. on the 23rd of February um, at events in the and it's also available on demand um, Australia-wide during the festival. 
So thank you, Kelly, Corbin, and Laura for joining us. Um, it was an absolute pleasure. I hope you enjoy the rest of your evenings. Um, and I wish you well for the rest of the journey with this film. And it's an absolute honor that I'm getting to screen it to um, Australian audiences. Thank you so much, Lisa. I so appreciate everything you've done for us. No worries. And Thanks. I love you, Laura and Corbin. I love you guys. Love you. So <laughs> good to see you all. You yeah, good to see you guys. All right.